don't you go fast? Why don't you go fast? Called Annie and Clarabel. Wait and see, wait and see, hissed Thomas. He's a long way ahead, they wailed. But Thomas didn't mind. He'd remembered the level crossing. There was Bertie fuming at the gates while they sailed gaily through. Goodbye, Bertie, called Thomas. All respectable engines do, replied Scarloey. Keep calm, Peter Sam, and you'll do well. But Peter Sam was in such a state that he couldn't listen. He collected some coaches and went on his way. But somehow, the faster he wanted to go, the slower the journey became. When Peter Sam finally fussed into the station, Henry was already there. This won't do, youngster, said Henry. I can't be kept waiting. If you are late tonight, I'll go off and leave your passengers behind. <laughs> said Peter Sam. When Duncan saw the elephant, he was surprised. Why, it's only a statue, he said. This is an easy job. You must wait for the brake van, said the station master. This statue is very heavy. Nonsense, huffed Duncan to his driver. I've pushed heavier loads than this plenty of times. Let's go, Duncan, said his driver. But we must be careful. So they left. But without the brake van. Come on, Henry, he would sometimes say. We've made good time today. We'll stop for a while by the forest. Henry loved it here. The forest was full of broad oaks and tall pines. Henry could remember the day long ago when he and Toby brought some new trees to be planted and Terence and Trevor helped haul them into place. Now he could see the trees growing amongst the others on the hillside. Henry always felt better for being here. He couldn't really explain why, but his driver understood. It's peaceful, he said to Henry. Then his fireman saw an old drain pipe lying beside the track. We'll use that instead of your funnel. At least it'll help control the smoke. Peter Sam finished his journey with the drain pipe wired to his boiler. The other engines laughed, and Sir Handel sang a song about it. Peter Sam said again and again, his new funnel will put us to shame. Went into the tunnel and lost his old funnel. Now his famous new funnel's a drain. The teasing continued until at last the day came when his new funnel arrived. Sir Topham Hatt proudly presented it. Ladies and gentlemen and engines, I am honored to inform you that Her Majesty the Queen herself is coming here to visit us. Now, on with the preparations. The engines wondered who would pull the royal train. I'm too old to pull important trains, said Edward. I'm in disgrace, sighed Gordon. He'll choose me, of course, boasted James. You, snorted Henry, you can't climb hills. He will ask me to pull the train, and I'll have a new coat of paint. I'd like to teach those freight cars a lesson, said Thomas the tank engine. Soon came the alarm. James is off the line. The breakdown train, quickly. Thomas was coupled on, and off they went. Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, 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 he puffed. He wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those freight cars and their tricks. I hope poor James isn't hurt.
James's driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Do you go to other places at sea? Continued Duck. Certainly. I can land on ships, you know. Anywhere, anytime. Goodbye. Duck sighed. He went on talking about the regatta all day. Percy lost patience. Well, Duck, I'd rather have my wheels on solid ground. Our rails can take us to all the places we could ever wish to see. That's an emergency, called Duck's driver. I'll check with the harbor master. He returned with bad news. A man taking part in the regatta has hurt his hand. We're to take him to the hospital at the next station. Harold's bringing him now. Come on. Soon, Harvey had finished loading the freight. Where are you going? asked Percy. Lord Callan's castle, Donald proudly announced. By Castle Lock. I'm glad I'm not going to Castle Lock, wished Percy nervously. Scared the monster might get you, teased Douglas. He might, said Donald. There's no monster. There is too. There is not. He's too. He's not. He's too. Thomas was on his way to the harbor with a trainload of metal pilings. They were needed to make the harbor wall firm and safe. Hello, Thomas, said Edward. This is Trevor, a friend of mine. He's a traction engine. Thomas eyed the newcomer doubtfully. A what engine, he asked. A traction engine, explained Trevor. I run on roads instead of rails. Can you take me to the harbor, please? Sir Topham Hatt has a job for me. Yes, of course, replied Thomas, but he was still puzzled. The viaduct has been repaired. We can take our train back along the old line tonight. Henry really didn't want to. But when nightfall came, he was sizzling nicely. Suddenly, an owl hooted, and then Gordon thundered by. Oh, look! Henry spooked, said a freight car. Be quiet, snapped Henry. I'm not scared. But he was. As he sped along, he suddenly saw a large hole in the road. He braked hard, but it was too late. Bother! Now I've got a puncture. If I change my wheel, I am sure to dirty my suit, and that would never do. Just then, he heard Caroline. I have to attend my wife's birthday party, and I cannot be late. Please give me a lift. I'll try, sir. But Caroline didn't like going fast. I'm hot! My engine will overheat! And it did. Told you so, said Caroline sadly. Bother! Bother! Suddenly, Rusty noticed something. Boulders moving. Don't be so daft. It can't, said the driver. But it could. It's rolling along our line. We'll stop here until Boulder passes by, said the driver. But Boulder was nowhere to be seen. Then, oh no, it's behind us. Scruffy, their leader, led the chorus. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he's very clever. Says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. When he orders us about with the greatest folly, we just push him down the well. Pop goes old Ollie. Thomas, Duck, and Percy were shocked. Be quiet, they ordered. 
But they couldn't be everywhere, and everywhere they weren't, the cars began again. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he's very clever. Says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. Emily could see that Oliver had broken down on the crossing. Then Emily heard Thomas's whistle. He could see Oliver, and he knew he could never stop in time. Oh! Emily charged towards Oliver, and with a huge effort, pushed him across the tracks. Just in time. The driver tried to put on the brakes, but Thomas couldn't stop. Oh, boy! The station master called ahead. Clear the lines, it's a runaway train. Signals were changed and points were switched. Thomas had never been so excited. Thomas flew by James and rocketed past Henry. And raced by Percy. They were amazed. Bye-bye, Stepney. <laughs> Stepney looked up. Above him was a huge grabber. This engine's not for scrapping. The grabber wasn't listening. But just as it was about to grab hold of him, it stopped. Thomas thought he was being clever. Really, he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his control. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wee, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors, cried Thomas and shut his eyes. The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled. Plaster was everywhere. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. Wind and rain buffeted Edward. His sanding gear failed, and his fireman rode in front, dropping sand on the rails by hand. Suddenly, Edward's wheels slipped fiercely, and with a shrieking crack, something broke. The crew inspected the damage. Repairs took some time. One of your crank pins broke, Edward, said his driver. We've taken your side rods off. Now you're like an old-fashioned engine. Can you get these people home? They must start back tonight. I'll try, sir, promised Edward. Then there was trouble. As Gordon approached the new station, neither the driver nor fireman could apply his brakes. Something had jammed. The driver reduced steam, but Gordon was still going too fast. Help me, please! Ready, steady, go! And they jerked at a coupling, which broke. We're making your wish come true, Toad! Follow the leader, yelled the freight cars. Toad was still in a state of shock, so he didn't know what to think. And he couldn't ask the conductor. He had jumped clear.
Faster, faster, as fast as you want, screamed the freight cars. No, no, not by the smoke of my chimney, chim, chim. I'll chop and I'll puff and I'll break your door in. Oh, dear, exclaimed Thomas. It's getting late. Oh, I'd no idea. Oh, I must find Annie and Clarabel. The diesel looked up. Do you mind? Yes, said Bill. I do. I want my cars back. These are mine, said the diesel. Go away. Bill pretended not to be frightened. You're a big bully, he whimpered. You'll be sorry. He ran back and hid behind the cars on the other side. Ben now came forward. Car stealer, hissed Ben. He ran away too. Bill took his place. This went on and on till the diesel's eyes nearly popped out. Stop, you're making me giddy. Thank goodness you're still here, panted Thomas. I hope we're not late, as it's just after eight. The conductor blew his whistle and waved his flag. The engines cheered. Look out, big city, here we come. And the cavalcade puffed away. big effort, and at last, exhausted but triumphant, he brought the train home. Well done, Percy, cheered Thomas. You kept your promise, despite everything. Sir Topham had arrived in Harold. First he thanked the men, then Percy. Harold told me you were a, a wizard. He said he can beat you at some things, but not at being a submarine. I don't know what you two get up to sometimes. But I do know that you're a really useful engine. Oh, sir, whispered Percy happily. Somehow today, we have to say goodbye. Thank you very much, Thomas. You are a really useful engine and a credit to the rail.